how to create some text effects like this in Affinity Designer. Now, there's probably loads of ways of doing this. This is a way that I've applied it. So, simply, it's just obviously some text there, some text there, and I've got this line here and this line here. Now, I'm not going to remove it. I'm just going to, just going to, I don't need it, but I'm just going to deselect those. Yeah, so everything's deselected. Now, I've got a grid. Grids make it really easy just to line things up, and I just, I love grids. So, go to View and Show Grid. Now, you can go over here, Grid and Access Manager, and just modify the grid in ways that you, are useful for yourself. Now, I've done videos on the grid, so please check those out. Now, what you can do, you just quickly create a circle. So, I'm just going to create a circle, and I'm going to fill it with something. So, I'm just going to very light gray and seven point and I'm just going to quickly create circles there and now I'm just going to position it so I'm just going to position it just so it's over that grid just there the top just makes it easier you just know exactly where you are now what I'm going to do I'm going to duplicate that now you think layer and unfortunately there's no duplicate command it baffles me why it's not there however you can go to layers and if you can't see the layers panel simply go to view and Studio and Layers. With that, you can right click and you go down there and you've got Duplicate. So Duplicate, so you've got now two ellipses. Now one I don't want to use initially, so I'm just gonna deselect that, but I'm just, I've am just i got it there so I can come back to it at a later point. So now with that, I can add some type or text to the path. So go over to here, over to the tools over here, Artistic Text Tool. Now I would say that it's, this is quite fiddly sometimes. I'm just going to go hover over, it and you can see a T there appear on a little squiggly line. And what you can do, you can click on there, and you can set the aerial 64 point. I think it's best that if you make it like seven or something. Sometimes you just can't see it. So I, I like to actually make it a bit bigger than that. So say 96 or something, so you can actually see it. This is some text. Of course, it could be anything. Doesn't have to be that. And you can move that around. You've got this little green marker there and you just move it. And now what you can do, of course, you can just position it. And that's the great thing about the grid. Because of course I would say, oh, that's about that. Oh, that's, that's about central. Well, I can just see that with using a grid, and obviously depending on the grid you create, you can line it exactly, so it's exactly across there, perfectly in the center. That's the way I do it. I'm certain there's other ways of doing it, but that's the way I've done it. Now, once you've got that, of course, you can always vary it again, select it, change it, and then recenter it again. Now, what you can then do is you can, of course, duplicate it. Duplicate the whole thing. So, again, you can hold down the alter option key or go over here and just duplicate the thing. But I'm just going to duplicate the whole thing. So, alter option key, and that's on the keyboard. Some people quite often ask, where is it, the alter option? It's obviously key there, so alter option. Hold that down, and you can duplicate the design with, over here, the move tool selected, and simply drag, and you've got two copies now. And of course, you can just put it on top again, and it will just, the smart guides will just show where it is. Now what you can do, you can rotate it. So you can rotate it, and then you can see, of course, it's that alignment there. You just rotate it obviously all the way around and you've got it. This is some text around the edge. Now you might think, oh, well, I want it on the line. Well, how do I do that? Well, I could have done that before, of course. It would be more sensible, but you can select the type obviously there. This is some text, select it. And there's an option here, baseline. What you can do, you can change baseline. So you can set it, say, 36. And you can just see, visually see, there, just, you can see the H just cut in there. Now, of course, what I can do, I can deselect that. I don't want that one. Now I'm just going to, and it's always quite good just to use the layers and just deselect. So you don't select by accident the other one because it's quite easy to select the other one by accident. Now what you can do, going up to this baseline setting here, just at the top, and again, change this. And you can set it to say 36 again. And you can see it's on that line. The H is on that just nicely there. Now, what you can do, bring the other one back again. Now I've got the old ellipse still there. Still got the ellipse, I haven't got rid of it. So I can bring it back in again. Now what you can do, you can go over here and you can 
with that select. I'm just going to deselect those just so I'm clear all that away. So I can just work with that ellipse. I always like to do that, it's much easier. So go to the move tool and then just change the size. You can, of course, maybe have dots, dashes, etc., brush stroke, whatever. So but I can change the width and I'm going to make it maybe a bit bigger than that. It's up to something like that. You can vary, of course, all kinds of ways. And there's a number of options here, various caps, joins. You can modify all those settings if you want to get nice roundings, pressure settings. You can do lots more with it than just that. But now you think, well, now I'm just going to bring back the old one so I can see them. But you can't see it. You can. So at this point, maybe it's best. I'm just going to change the color because obviously I've got black. So maybe it's best to go, and I, quite often these are sort of things when you're working on this, you suddenly think, you know what? Suddenly, let's just change the color. Just makes it easy. Obviously I can change it back again, but you can now see it because I want to see the text as well. So I can just carefully select. What you can do, you can go to a layer and then go to layer menu and convert to curves. So it's converted to a curve. So instead of a circle, which you can't break, well, you might be able to break apart, I don't know, but this, I'm just, I can break apart a curve. That's the key thing. Now I can use the node tool. So here's the node tool up here, node tool. And with the node tool, what you can do, you can go and select a point and you can just see there, you can, obviously you can decide where you want to put it. Very close to there, I'm just going to click there, near the T and also near that T as well. Now you can make a slight judgment, it's just about there. And I made two dots around there. And likewise down here, do exactly the same and down there. Another dot added. And again, the grid helps you decide as well. You can just decide that's where I'm gonna. So you can make finer grid than what I've got. You could sub, lots of subdivisions and all that sort of stuff. What you can then do is now, you can select those individual parts by break using this break curve. So I can select that. Now I can just go here to the action, break curve. And I can go up to hit this one and I can break curve again. This is the break curve just at this point here. So break curve there. And just go that one, break curve again, go that one and break curve there. Now, so you can see what you've got, you've got these individual parts. Now, what you can do, you can remove, you will keep them. So maybe you decide, you know what? I don't want it to be, so I'm just gonna select the one that's above. So say that one. Well, I can go, oh, I'll go for green. Now make it more garish. And also I can go for the one there, the one that's below. I can go for, maybe make that blue. Or maybe lighter blue so you can actually see it. And then I can go for this curve. I can go for that one, keep it red, or I'll make it bright red. And then I can go for the other curve, which is over there, select that one, and I can go for yellow. And so on. So you can create a nice sort of visual design. Now you'll notice that the curves have still got the things I can select. That one, and I'm just going to set the fill because I don't want it now. I just set it to no, null. So there's a little there. So you should just set it, because obviously I just don't want those. So again, click there, there, click that one. And again, go to the fill, no. And again, to the last one, that curve there, just to get rid of it. Now you don't have to remove it, of course, you can keep it, but if you're reasonable, but you can see so you can remove that. So you've got your design there. But of course you can if you want now, you can see what you can do. Next thing you can do, say that green there curve, I can just deselect that. I don't have to remove it. I can delete it of course, I can just go down, just delete it, just as easy, but I'm not. I'm just gonna go down and deselect it. And that one there, deselect that one. And now you can see, now I've got this design with this. Ring. Now I of course, oh, I made a slight mistake. I made it a bit too close, but I just cut it. I spent a bit more time carefully cutting, breaking. I could separate that bit better. And of course you can always go and vary the size if you want as well. Just change the stroke width. And then that would obviously 
remove it slightly. But a bit of careful braking, maybe give a little bit more space. I should have given a little bit more space. But you can see the general sort of idea about how to approach this. And again, what you can do if you want it to be black, so go to that curve, go to the stroke, and go to black there. And go, go to this one, and again, go to black for that one. Now what you can do, and again, you can, whenever I select that, it always selects the uh, this, I do, but I want to, basically it's best to use the layer. It's always, layers pan, panel, it's always best to do that, otherwise it just keeps always going back and selecting the top one. Very inconvenient, but however, I just want to use that. And what you can do, of course, you've got settings here. So you can turn around and say, you know what, I'm going to go for butt gap. So you can create that gap. So butt, then select, again, okay, I did that. Want that curve. And again, I can do exactly the same there. And I can go to there, the cap. And you can see now you've got the gap between that. And of course you can always, again, if you want, go to here and you can maybe go for dashes. So go that side and go there and go to dashes. And you can see you can create a design like that. Whole range of different designs where you've got the text there and text there. And of course what you can do once you've done all those, you can simply select, select all of those and then group them. So right click and group. So it will become one single group. And there you've got it, you've got your design. And of course you can still edit this text and obviously you still have to then modify and cut again. That's unfortunate, that's, unless there's another way of doing it. I am certain there is always with from designer, all applications, there's always thousands of ways of doing it. And this is just one approach that may be of use to create this sort of design. Hope you found this of interest. Always adding new tutorials about from designer, Publisher, also photo, of course, also Photoshop, Illustrator, and Critter, Rebel, Painter. Just trying to think of all the applications that I run through. And please subscribe to Graphic Extra channel. Always adding new tutorials all the time. So please subscribe to that. And also uh, please put a dislike or like. Always appreciate. And of course, any comments, what sort of things have I done wrong, done right? Please let me know because I'm quite often. It's uh, it might be a better approach, and it's nice to know, and then I can change it. Maybe do another tutorial later. Thank you much.